Hello everybody, the Lawn Gnome is here, and my bum is on the Swedish. So what happens when two sci-fi nerds just happen to get a crazy, actual close encounter in the midst of their science fiction adventure pilgrimage? What do you get? You get the movie Paul. Greg Mottola, the director of Superbad, has teamed up with Edgar Wright's Wonder Boys to give you probably one of the not-so-average alien comedies you will ever see. Or is it? Now, I just want to let you know that when I originally wanted to see this movie after seeing the trailers, I was like, I think that the story about this movie is what happens if E.T. was found by a bunch of stoner kids from the valley, see him, and then they yell, bong hit. I went to see this movie, and I gotta tell you that I got a completely different movie. And believe it or not, for the better. Paul is in fact not a sci-fi comedy or a sci-fi spoof. Now, granted, it does involve an alien, and granted, there are a lot of science fiction pop culture references thrown into this movie, but when you strip all of that away, what you really get is just a good old-fashioned buddy comedy. It is just the story of two guys living out their childhood dream, and in an explosive turn of events, their other dream that they had somewhere in the back of their heads, which they didn't actually believe would happen, ends up happening, and now they gotta take a look at each other, take a look inside themselves, and just as they say in the movie, roll the dice and take a chance, and with each other by their sides, as well as some new friends, all bets are off, it's time to get some stuff done. What did I like about this movie? Well, first of all, there can, it can only be summed up in two names, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. Now, these two guys are probably the most dynamic buddy duo since Jay and Silent Bob in the 1990s. These guys, no matter what situation you put them in, no matter what kind of movie they're doing, they just know how to work off each other and play their their roles so perfectly. They're always hysterical. They always make me laugh. And then you throw in another massive amounts of awesome characters. You throw in Jason Bateman, you throw in Kristen Wiig, you throw in Bill Hader, and a ton of other people that you definitely have heard of and seen before and enjoy watching. So there's never a dull moment with any of the actors that you see in this film. Now I gotta talk about Seth Rogen, and I'm sure that some of you who have seen my Green Hornet review saw how terribly I bashed Seth Rogen. But I gotta tell you, Seth Rogen to me is a crazy creature. He did the voice of Paul. And when he seems to do his voice acting, rather than his actual acting, to me, it's like he breathes a different life into himself and into the character that he plays. And I gotta tell you, when I see these kinds of movies like Monsters vs. Aliens or Kung Fu Panda, I actually enjoy him as a voice actor. Maybe he should do that for a living instead of doing his regular acting, which I really don't like. But then again, that's my opinion. Besides all that... What I also love about this movie is it's very believable. I mean, what would you expect an alien who's been sitting on Earth in a prison cell surrounded by humans for 60 years going to do? Well, he's going to learn English. He's going to learn how to be sarcastic and witty. And he's going to smoke a lot of weed. And that's what I liked about this character. Paul really was, in fact, just as human as we are with a little bit of tweaks thrown in there. And another message that I really liked that this movie sent to us was how strange we as humans are as a collective creature in this universe. When we encounter something that we quite don't understand, we get afraid, we get violent, and we do very strange things. Whether that means taking your children and having them guided by faith, to the point where they are literally prisoners of it, 
or to the point when you are a shut-in, you grow reed in your backyard, and it's all because of the fact that a UFO killed your family dog. <laughs> what were the negatives about this movie? Well, I gotta tell you, I didn't see anything wrong with it, but I have to look at the collective and for the greater good. Oh, the greater good. This movie, amongst its dick and fart jokes and its instant gratification when it comes to its laughs, it does have some British comedy thrown in there. Now, British comedy is dry, sometimes it has no taste, and sometimes people just don't understand it. Let me give you some British comedy 101 that I learned from a friend way back in the day. American comedy. Man walks down the street, doesn't see a manhole, falls into the manhole. British comedy. Man walks down the street, sees the manhole right before he's about to fall in, avoids it, two seconds later gets hit by a bus. That's what British comedy is, and it doesn't always sit well with people. But Paul as a whole, you're going to get a lot of laughs, you're going to enjoy it, and you're also going to learn a few awesome new curse words. Asshord. So what did I think of this movie? Well, I'd give it a perfect score, but like I said, for the collective good, I'm going to have to give Paul an extremely strong three and a half out of four. It is the best movie that I've seen so far this year, and it's one of the best comedies that I have seen in a while, probably since The Hangover. So please, hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe, um, give it a thumbs up for this video, and I'd like to leave you with a question, guys, and put that in the comments below. What does Seth Rogen mean to you? Do you like him? Do you hate him? To me, he's just a uh, brain fart on entertainment right now. That's my attitude towards him, though I could be totally wrong. Leave in the comment box what you think of him. So that's my show for today. Hope you enjoyed, guys. And remember, actions speak louder than words. Yeah.